Previously on Polyamory. The easiest place to get a job was at the Eager Wenches brothel. While she was working there, she made friends with all of the other girls. She and everyone else working there lived under a tyrannic rule of the owner named Scrum, who exploited the girls, didn't give them enough pay. The patrons were free to do as they pleased without consequence. It reached a point where she had enough, and over a period of a few years, she gained the trust of the brothel owner, had a small sum of wealth accumulated through putting aside some wages and stealing from the other patrons. She used her uh, little spoken powers to charm Scrum into signing a contract turning the rights of the brothel over to her. After claiming ownership of the brothel and using the comfortable sum of the wealth that she'd obtained, she very much changed up how the business worked. She gave the girls equal pay and part ownership of the brothel. She let them just switch to dancing if they wanted to, if they weren't comfortable with anything else. Gave them all very comfortable living quarters, priority safety over the enjoyment of the patrons. They were no longer under this wretched eyeing grip this nasty bastard scrum and they were all a lot happier for it she also renamed the brothel no longer was it the ego wenches brothel it turned into madame valerie's working girls cooperative who she considered now her family on the 10th anniversary of the co-option of the brothel scrum still with a grudge and with the backing of those less progressively minded in the city council issued a cease and desist and so for the past <gasps> three days there has been a siege going on at Madame Valerie's Working Girls Cooperative. You have all been boarding yourselves in to stop from being torn from your home, many of you to be sold back into slavery if Scrum has his way. You may gather up all of your things, collect yourselves in a timely fashion, and depart through the window. Or you can wake the girls. I'm going to wake the girls, obviously. I, they, they are my family. I want to warn them that something is coming. Everybody decides the best thing to do is to escape to the nearest surface gate and make their way to Groibon, which is across the plains and a place of safety. It's a big town in the Underdark that everyone knows will be safe. Once you are out into the world, the girls decide that it would be safest for you, rather than travelling as one large group, that they will go as one party and you will go as a separate party. They indeed may split up into separate parties themselves, because travelling as large group of underdark dwellers as you are would not be very safe. My dark eldritch god has finally granted upon me Find Familiar, which I can use to summon a pseudo dragon to my service. Are you ready to meet Puff? The magic dragon! You know, we have a scry tome now. I've been trying to figure out how to get the fucking thing to work. After a while, the screen starts to glow, uh, a strange blue-white glow. There are some images that appear on the screen. You sign up to Instagram as the Polycuties, and you are introduced yes. to your, your Instagram feed. Uh, I vote first thing we do is fucking we make sweet. sure to have both Trash Boy and Lactone added. Okay, okay, we'll do one good selfie. It is um, some kind of contacts list. Uh, you see most most recently added on oh. there is Trash Boy that you put on yourself. Woo. And then you have Lauren, Obman, brackets, boss, and Dave, brackets, worm guy. And in a darkened corner, you see a, an elderly looking orc. Please come and have a seat. Well, you know how things are at the moment. Uh, a lot of people displaced thanks to this... Uh, Fist of Guileway, the the warrior priest. Some call him Fortson. This Guileway, not a god I've ever heard of, though. Any any idea why they they want to get rid of us? I'd say it's racism, plain and simple. There must have not been more than eight or ten of them, including Fortson. Seems. Strange they claim to worship this Guileway, so I've never heard of a god like this. Especially not one that seems to give them such dark powers when they claim to be working for the light. Those men seem to wear the sign of a blue tree that hangs upside down. The Great Library might be somewhere to start. Half a day north to Groibon. I scroll through the directory and try and find the names of, of the old girls. You're all okay! Yeah, we're, we're mostly oh. okay. We, we made it. We got, we got out of there. We've, we've, we've headed to Turtown. Madame Luriana's okay. looking after us. Delilah's missing, though. Oh, that sucks. When did you last see Delilah? She was out making a house call few nights ago and she just seems to have vanished on her way home. Okay, so we can make a stop into a town on the way to Groybon. Well, Vindy, it seems we've had a little bit of news about Modrasar. Seems to have turned up again just outside Turtown. Is that a plot point I hear? 
I suggest you head down and see Barry down at the gate. He will sort you out with a company cart. He sets about pulling out a cart with the polyarmory logo on the side, two crossed axes on the black, red and blue background. Yokes up to it, uh, two very large pigs. I have an animal handling of two. Then you're driving. Mm-hmm. You start to ride out of town, off towards Turtown. Fighting death in human horse, Thorson tried to kill them all. They escaped the vile moor, now polyamory stored. Polyamory! <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Stone Monkey Radio's roleplay series, Polyamory. I am Jane Magnet, and I am the mistress of this dungeon. Joining me today to be punished until they scream the safe word, which today is Cantankerous, are Laura Kate Dale. Hello. And George Johnson. Howdly doodly, friend Arunis. Tell us a bit about what you've been doing this week. Oh, what have, what have I been doing? I've been, I've been doing a lot of work. Work, work, work. It's all I seem to do these days, isn't it? I, I got to play a new Mario game. That was pretty fun. Nice. Yeah, had a pretty good week. Excellent. What about you? How's your week been? Well, I started uni again. That's been exciting. Ooh. I've got the poll forms printed off. Yay. Ooh. Yeah. You're official. I am officially changing my first name, and I will announce it here. Oh, I know, shocker! It's Very exclusive. exciting. That it's it's a hit exclusive. Um, this and my Facebook page, I suppose. Um, We've got the scoop. I'm changing my name to Astrid. It's Astrid. Yay. Yay. The name I've been trying not to say for the last couple of weeks. Woo. Yeah, we <laughs> have to I keep, can just say it. We've had to keep reminding ourselves on the show, like we're not we're not saying the thing. Yet. <laughs> Don't have to do it anymore because Hooray. it's official now. Yay. Yeah, we've we've known about this for a little while, but now, now you do. Now all that needs to happen is for me to not mess it up by mistake, <laughs> or me to fuck no. up and say the wrong thing. Yes, that's fine. Hang Life on, is we, fun. Which one am I saying now? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> the proverbial cat is out of the bag. <laughs> It is, also, and if it's it... so much happier not, than not being in the bag. I know, right? Also, if at any point me and Astrid talk over each other this week, it's because we're sharing a microphone. We're in the same room. Yeah. <gasps> da, da, da. Exciting times. So in order to, to get the, the, the trifactor together, we now need to do an episode where Astrid and I are in the same room. Because <laughs> yes. we've done all the other combinations already. So this is good. Mm. Anyway, and, and I myself, I don't usually talk about what I do, but you know what? I'm going to do it this week. Uh, I'm not very well this week. I am mm. sweating and nasty, and and my voices might not be very good. Some would argue my voices aren't very good most of the time, but they're going to be particularly well, I bad disagree. this week. I disagree. Your voices are very good. I love them. I'm glad you approve. Today I have been uh, playing a game produced by Adult Swim Games, which was Small Radio's Big Televisions, which was quite an interesting, quite an interesting experience. Simple puzzle games took me about two hours, and that's including stopping to make tea without pausing. Uh, It's it's worth a look if if you've got nine quid. Anyway, you were on the back of a a beautiful cart being pulled by a couple of quite beefy looking piggies. Boink boink. With the polyamory livery on the side. And uh, as we left last time, uh, you had each had a, a quick meal at Daru's. So I think we should start the episode with your constitution checks to see how that went. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like to think you bagged these up and then uh, took them on, had on them the car. the road. Yeah. I, I, I got a nine on constitution. Which means they've exceeded their uh, the time in which they are fit for human consumption. <laughs> yeah. And other race consumption. Your fries um, were cold. You were not impressed. That's fine. As long hey! as like 13. You get a point of inspiration. And who will oh. roll for the boy? The boy rolls a 17 on constitution. The boy enjoys his meal also, so he too gets a point of inspiration. I will... Hey! There we go. I take it that's because it's especially difficult to enjoy seeing as it's been in a bag for a while. Yeah, the fries are a bit cold. The, the, fillet, the sort of filling the, the is... The rats are a bit bouncy. Yeah, you... you... <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to tell stories about my previous experience working in fast food. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't do anything of the sort. As, as my former boss told me, proper fillet. Proper fillet that is properly cooked should not bounce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it would probably been in there for about half an hour. Anyway, shh. <clears throat> also, I believe you had one of each colour capsule. 
Yes, yes, we did. So do you want to pop those open? Excellent. I'll pop open mine, which is red, as You've usual. red, yeah. Okay. What one did I get? 16. What's 16? What's 16? What is 16? Little drum so, roll. Dum, 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 16. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Ooh! This won't be very good for you. Uh, oh. You have a single use of Shocking Grasp. Nice! Which I believe is one of your spells anyway. Oh. Can I have it? Here you go. Thank you. I pass. I pass the single use shocking grasp to Bromara, <laughs> as if Loving she needed any more power. With a little kiss. I, um, I always need more power. More power. 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 Phenomenal cosmic power. I. I don't yet have to deal with the nitty bitty living space. Well, I mean, it's not a huge room that you live in above the polyarmory. Yes, I pop that in your inventory. Who's next? Uh, I'm gonna open the the one with the statue in it, which is yellow. Green. A green. Okay, I'm going to open the green. Okay, number two. two. Uh, you have what looks like a large ogre wearing an eye patch and holding <gasps> a large sack. Its oh. smile is badly painted and makes it look rather creepy. Ah, oh. uh, I hand it to the boy. Ah, oh. he is very excited um, and, and does a little squee and gives you a big hug and nuzzles into your into your hand. He's oh. got to catch them all. He has got to catch them all. All of them. Not le- uh, leave no badly painted resin figure behind. Yes, uh, and then there's um, the yellow capsule. Yeah, there is. Do you want to roll for that? Eight. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Does inside. it suit one of us better than the others? Uh, well, who's going to have it? I'll have Ast- it. Astrid's just opened it, so um, I take the thing. Whatever no! it is. No, let me see what it is first. Okay, inside, fine. You have it. <laughs> inside the capsule is a sock. Just one sock. Just one sock. Just one sock. Is Madame Valerie a free a free elf? I'm a free house elf. <laughs> you are you're a free elf. <laughs> <laughs> so who's having the sock? I think it would look really cute as a tail cozy for Thrall. <laughs> sure. Is right. it a long sock? Yes, it's like a, a thigh it's, high. Yeah, it's a it's a thigh high. Yeah, it'll, a it'll single a tail. single thigh high sock. <laughs> yes, uh, one tail cozy. <laughs> Yay! There we go. I I um I slip it on Thrall's tail and give him a little like one of those cutesy little cheek pinches that people give to people. That will stop the boy getting a uh, a, a, a sniffle on his tail. <laughs> Should that ever occur? Anyway, mm. don't want any tail secretions. secretion there's a lovely word as you make your way to tour town you see many weary travelers on the road it looks like there are many more refugees uh, heading from the south fleeing towards groydon folk in ragged clothes carrying huge packs now all their worldly possessions are with them just on the outskirts of tour town you see a a large camp hundreds of tents have been pitched uh, to house the refugees Here and there are field kitchens serving stew to the hungry. You see a few of the tents sort of nearer the cave wall look much more big and grand. Uh, Obviously people Hmm. who are well connected and and perhaps better organised or or had had more in the first place are are making the most of that. And (coughs) there there is clearly some inequality in the size of the tents at least. Who knows what else is going on. How, how audible was that knuckle cracking on the recording? Um, I can tell you from previous experience, it's usually really, really, really loud and, and quite gross because I have to go back over it several times and listen to it. I'm sorry. And I usually edit it out. It's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanted to add Foley. I can appreciate the sentiment. It means I, it means I know that Madame Valerie is angry. Mm. Madame Valerie is hella pissed. Ooh, she does not like the inequality in tents. No. <laughs> You eventually come to the town proper. It's more densely populated than more town. Tall housing structures reach high up to the ceiling of this cavern. There's washing strung out of some of the windows. There's many general stores selling cheap goods. Uh, there's a nine copper shop, one silver land. There's plenty of places to bet on any type of fighting you want. All this is uh, interspersed with, with newer shops, like there's there's a Daru's, uh, a cartoon warehouse. There's an elf food shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> At last you come to the local polyarmory, uh, just by the surface gate. And as you Pull up outside. An elderly goblin comes out wearing thick glasses and leading on, uh, leaning on a, a gnarled walking stick. Oh, you must be Vendy's lot. 
Yeah, that's us. That is us. I hope, I hope the road wasn't too congested with all these refugees. And he, he ah. pushes his glasses up his nose. Mm. It's alright, they didn't get in the way of the cart, we're all good. Well, I suggest <laughs> you uh, pop pop the cart in with the livery and uh, come, come in and I'll, I'll sort you out with some cash to pay for that hammer. Oh, you'll sort us out with some cash, yes. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. This is where we're coming to pick up, like, the cash from the local branch. I assumed we had the cash already with us from the previous place, yeah. which is where I got confused for a second. Yeah. I, I didn't completely forget that at the end of last episode and then put a tweet out about it to make it funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, Madam, Madam Valerie was checking the Scrytome network, did actually see <laughs> the boss uh, giving an update on Twitter. Uh, on what's the underdog version of Twitter called? Screecher. Screecher. I saw the boss's update on Screecher. She forgot to give us the money, which is why we're collecting it now. I'm ah, assuming she didn't forget this was all part of the plan for security <laughs> that you weren't carrying six thousand gold around with you. Well, this is why I was worried about. This is why I was worried about going through the camp. Now, see, that's that's not what I'm reading on on the screecher feed. I I don't think we should be making such a big deal of this because I'm pretty sure we've forgotten far a far higher number of things. I know. I'm really sorry. It's I, okay. I would just like to say it was all part of the plan. It was all part of the plan. I, I would just like to say. <laughs> <clears throat> Innocent whistling. You're sorting us out with the money, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. That that sounds good. We we park up and go head inside. I want to go straight into the polyamory because I have a burning question on my mind, which is: Is it merely a coincidence that a polyamorous thruple got employed at the polyamory? Is is that a coincidence? Are the coincidence not exclusive to Mordtown? Are we are we the only polys that are polyamory? That's, that's only one way to find out. Yeah. Let's go in. Okay. I'll go in. So you you park up, you head into the polyarmory, which is this store looks much older than yours. There's something about the architecture of the front of the shop that's just it's just looks older, a bit more. It's, it's bit more vintage. of a sort of yeah, sort of more of a vintage shop. This one's obviously been standing here for a, a little while uh, longer than the Mordtown branch. Hmm. You head inside, and the manager is shuffling around. There doesn't appear to be anyone else in the shop. Uh, in fact, quite a lot lot of the, the stock here appears as old as the rest of the shop. There's not much new stuff, but then what's new in a spear or, or sword, really? Mm. There's a, a Tech big hasn't catalog. advanced that far, has it? <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a big old catalogue, for, and the manager pops over to the, the record book, uh, similar to the same as you have in your branch, flips it open and, and marks it in, in the book. Oh well, if you just wait there for a moment, I won't be long, just got to get the money out for you. And he uh, pops into the back, you hear some scraping around and uh, something large and metal opening. And uh, he comes back, just heaving along the floor, because he's, he's quite elderly and usually uses a stick. Both hands, he's, he's pulling two bags of 3,000 gold just do along wanna, the floor. Do you want to hand dragon those? Oh, thank you, that'll be lovely. Thank you. I... I give a hand bringing the bags over. I also help out. Okay. Now, the person you need to see is called Revo. He's actually over in that camp. You probably passed it on the way into town. Uh, where do we... How do we find Revo? It was one of the larger tents. They seem to be setting up business in some of them. It's apparently got some building work going on at the back. Uh, I believe it's some kind of whorehouse called Succubi. Oh... This seems like a a fortuitous turn of events because that might also line up with some other investigations we're doing. Oh yes, Finn, you did mention that you were were on your own business as well. Just as long as you uh, don't lose the money and do come back with the hammer, of course. What I want to do before we go any further Mm -hmm. is I want to summon my my pseudo-dragon. I assumed you still had it out from last time. Yeah, well that's I I let's let's say I have my pseudo dragon out. Mm-hmm. I would like to have my pseudo dragon hold on to the two bags of gold and then I'm going to temporarily dismiss my pseudo dragon. So you're heading straight off to the camp. How how long did it take us to get from roughly the camp to here previously? Mm, about 20 minutes. Okay. Do you want to do you want to drive? And I will start trying to cast Find Familiar in the back of the cart. And then we've at least I'll got 20 minutes go. in. Yeah, okay. And you'll just have to let them know at the other end, hey, we are summoning our person that has the gold. 
Mm. That's perfectly understandable. Yeah. It makes us look professional. Indeed, See? we 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 used a very secure method of of yeah. gold trans- uh, yeah. transport. Yeah. Right, what do I need to roll in order to figure out if I drive good or not? That would be your animal handling. Okay, fingers crossed. Hey, there we go. I will definitely allow that. Awesome. Okay, Okay. so you're you're taking the cart then, right? Okay. So you drive the cart back from whence you came, Mm. uh, heading out towards the camp. About ten minutes down the road, a a sort of middle-aged drow woman in, in quite tattered clothes comes sort of hastily walking towards you. Excuse me, excuse me, have you seen my daughter? She's lost. Hmm. I'm not going to be much help right now because I'm in the middle of casting an hour-long spell that requires verbal components, so you're on your own here. Can I make an insight check to see if she's trying to scam us or not? Just to be safe, because like, I'm like, not sure... You may always roll the thing. Okay, 19. Uh, she seems very sincere. She looks okay. quite quite desperate and, and sad. She, she's got quite sort of bloodshot eyes from clearly she's clearly been crying and maybe not sleeping for a while she looks right she looks genuinely sort of stressed by this whole situation right okay i sort of lean down to her stop the cart a bit Mm -hmm. how how can we help we may not have seen your daughter yet but if you can give us a brief description where you last saw her we might be able to help you out please my daughter she's she's patu she was walking to get water for for our family, and she has never come back. We were over at the refugee camp, and no one has seen her. You will know her. She has beautiful, unique red eyes and a cross-shaped scar on her cheek. How long has she been missing? At least a day. Getting uh, hard to remember. I have not slept. I am so worried about my daughter. We can't... Oh, no, I can't say anything. This is... No. You, you've yeah, got to no, handle I, I've this. this. I've got this. <laughs> Look, I can't. I can't promise that we'll find your daughter, but we can do. We'll do whatever we can to track her down. If we do find her, we will take her back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have you. a specific? Do you, do you know where specifically in the refugee camp we should take her? And she gives you vague directions to her tent. Okay. Okay. If we find if we find her, we'll take her back to your tent. Thank you. Thank you, kind ladies and sir. It's okay. You heading off? Yeah, I suppose we're heading off then. It's not up to me. You're the one that can, we're that heading can make off. choices. Yeah, be I confident. I have decided that we are heading off. <laughs> go with you being confident making yeah, choices. Yeah, can we go? <laughs> you continue driving on. Slowly, you come to where the tents are getting more dense. There are wider paths between some of the tents. So you can care, care, very carefully drive the, the cart along there. The piggies seem a little bit nervous with all, all the people around, and there are a, a lot of very desperate and, and sad-looking people. On one side nearest the cavern wall, you see what looks like a building work. Somebody is, is putting up an actual stone structure. Oh, um, hey, that sounds familiar. And against it is one of the larger tents, and... Strung across the front of the tent is a bit of bunting, which states cheap girls available and pronounces the name of this establishment, Succubi. Hmm. You drive closer, knowing that this is your target, and outside you see a couple of quite aggressive-looking goblins. They've clearly been in in a few fights, but they are vaguely attempting to smile. As you pull the cart up near the uh, thing, uh, I would say the the by the time you you've got here, it's probably about forty minutes. Do you just want to wait and finish the spell, or or do you want to go in and give them a like a heads up and start checking the mm. veracity of this before we have the gold out? Yeah, before we get the gold out, let's make sure that it's not a really dodgy place that have lied to us to try and steal our money. Okay, well, in that case, I'm still in the back of the uh, the cart while you head in, I guess. Yeah, okay. I walk up to the grizzled goblins. You walk up to the goblins, they're all in tow, mm-hmm. and the, they give you a leering grin and a knowing wink to thrall, and pull back the, the tent flap and just you in. Inside, the floor is just rough stone as much as the the rest of the outside of the cavern. There is a smell of sweat, sex, stale booze and tobacco. It's unpleasant to say the least. There is a, a, a small mm. bar set up against I, one I don't side. Know, it sounds like pretty a right time to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're casting a spell. <laughs> oh yes, sure, sure, I'm casting a spell. 
and outside, so you can't see this. <laughs> As you come in, there are a, a few orcs and goblins, a couple of bugbears sort of just sitting quite drunk. One of the bugbears has a half-naked girl sitting on his knee. She looks a bit spaced out, like she's on something or drunk. Mm. She doesn't really seem to be paying much attention, but he's just very much enjoying the fact that she's half naked. You are greeted by just a sleazy looking goblin in a suit, of all things. It's mm -hmm. It makes the shoulders look bigger than he is. He's got the old, very much 80 shoulder pads in there, yeah, trying, right, to, okay. trying to show himself very much the bigger man than he is. That it comes down to a very sleek waist, clearly worried about coming across as, as large. He wants to look sort of sharp, but very imposing. He is. Um, he has a, an attempt at a moustache. It's quite <laughs> thin and wispy, but uh, he's clearly been working on it for a while. He just, just no, doesn't have the face for it, but won't accept that. Yeah. He grins at you in a way that makes you incredibly uncomfortable. Winks at Thrall and says, Well, oh, hello, sir. Yes, yes, hello. Uh, brought us a girl, have you? Uh, how much do you want for her, then? And Thrall who does not speak, says nothing. Excuse me, sir. We are representatives of the Poly Armoury, and we are here to collect a certain item. This is my bodyguard, Thrall. Nice to meet you. Oh, sending the women folk, eh? Well, <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Young lady? Yes, I suppose you have the gold then, do you? Well, I just wanted to come in and make a cursory glance to make sure this establishment wasn't, for lack of a better word, shithole. And now that I've seen that it's not lethal, I suppose we can go and collect the gold and come back upon viewing the hammer to make sure that it is genuine. Oh, of course, this way, this way. Before, before walking with him, I <laughs> spit on the ground quite disgruntledly, Ooh. giving him a bit of a nasty look. Which way? This way, this way, darling. <clears throat> And uh, he gestures you through to a back room in, in part of the building that is, is built as a building. You're, the, the, the tent is basically a lean-to to what is being built around it at the moment. He brings you into a, an office. There's a desk in there. God knows where they got a desk from. A little uh, enchanted lamp on the table. It's, it looks like a Tiffany lamp. Just sat on the corner of his table. A very high back chair in gaudy red leather. Or maybe not, maybe pleather, who knows. No. It all looks very bleh, wipe clean and gross. It's not nearly as classy as it thinks it is. Anything about this place. He goes to a large <laughs> he goes to a large safe at the back of the room and mm -hmm. stands hunched in front of it, so you hear the the sounds as the tumblers are uh, unlocked, and then finally the the lever being pulled down, he swings the door open wide, it creaks on its hinges. And again, goodness knows where they got a safe in this town. He pulls out what is very familiar to you as a hammer you've seen previously and pops it on the table in front of you. Well, here you are, of course, here you are. Exactly as we told head office. I'm sure the men have probably sent you down with something to make sure it's all above board. You should have the hash down, shouldn't I you? I do have the hash yeah, down. I'm, okay. just, I'm just preparing what I want to say. <laughs> You're preparing your... Uh... <laughs> Sprightly gentleman. <laughs> Remember, we are here for work. I was actually sent down by my boss, Vendirak, a rather sizable ogre woman with a device that I will now use to make sure that this isn't some scammy shit. So, if you'll give me a moment, I, I take out the... What's it called again? Hash stone. I take out the hash stone. I hold it up against the hammer. It glows and vibrates, exactly as you have been told that it would in the presence of the true hammer. Just as a brief reminder, the last time the hammer was on top of like a box or something, wasn't it? Yes, it was on top of yes. a box marked with the an image of a red fish. Yes, the red herring, as it were. And this time it's a table so we can see that there's not something... And it was like... taken from, underneath, for, from a safe and placed onto the desk rather than it already being there. Yeah. Yeah. So we can see that there's not, or, or sorry, at least Madame, Madame Valerie would be able to see that there's not, like, the hammer's actually under the table very clearly or something. There's there's no clear evidence that there is any form of subterfuge here. I would like to make a perception check to see if anything is awry. Two. Uh, you see nothing. Is that a crit? Was that a crit fail? It was a crit fail. Oh. Um, 
You are confused by the very presence of the room around you. For a moment, you thought you were in a pub. But no, no, you're definitely in this room with a, a gross little man with a bad moustache and a ridiculous jacket faced with a, a hammer that looks very familiar and reacted to the hash stone as predicted. So, just as a heads up, there is a second chance we get at this, which is when you go out to get me the money we come back in, I will obviously have an opportunity to see if I can see anything up. Mm. So yeah. we will have a second opportunity. The standard double check. Yes, of... and hopefully I won't also mistake this for a pub. Very well, I will be back with my other associate and the money. Yes, see you, see you in a moment, darling. <clears throat> you I'm... hurry back. God, I hate this character. Uh, oh, <laughs> you created hell. them. I am itching for a reason to punch <laughs> him in the fucking nuts. Just one. <laughs> Just uh, one. You, I get a suspicion you're gonna get a you're gonna get your opportunity in a minute. I turn around. I walk out <laughs> of the shithole. I walk up to the cart. I look at Bromara. I throw up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mimic throwing up on the floor. You might want to hold your nose when you come in here. How are we coming along with the ritual? DM, how are we coming along with the spell? It's nearly done. Hooray, <laughs> let's wait for it to be done. Ping, Good, the less done. time I spend in there, the... Oh no! We have what? to go right back in. We have to go right back in. <laughs> okay. okay, Puff the Magic Dragon appears in a puff of smoke. And is it a magic two large puff? Bags. It is a magic puff. <laughs> It's the finest puff you've ever smelt. Um, <laughs> oh, no. You now are in the presence again of 6,000 gold. I, I take the gold and I'm just going to, like, I've clearly, I've not yet met this this asshole, so I'm no. going to lead the charge and in we go. Okay. You head back into the tent. The goblin bouncers outside hold the, the tent flap open for you. Mm-hmm. You march back in, and there is Revo chatting to uh, a, a member of staff who's just said something to him. And he replies, Oh, just rinse her off and prepare her for the next one. And this random kobold scuttles off to, to do whatever it is he's been told. Ah, oh, sir, yes, I'm guessing you're in charge here. Please do come in, come in, yes. Oh, I see you have the gold. Yes, your assistant here. Lovely, isn't she? I'm sure she's very helpful to you on the road. Oink. I just look at him, and all that's going through Bromara's head is, do the deal, then kick his fucking ass. Do the deal Sorry, first, then kill his fucking ass. Give me a moment. I'm gonna need a wisdom throw. New person. Yes. Eleven. You pass your wisdom throw? Oh, phew. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm currently just sort of... Seething. I'm seething, but biting my tongue. Okay. Because I know that, like, having this fight before we've made the deal is probably not beneficial. I feel like this is a situation right now where, as, as nasty as it is getting misgendered, I feel like I'm gonna have a better chance of this deal going well if I just shut up for the second, if I can. He shows you through back into his office. Yes, yes, here it is. Your, your secretary's checked it out already, of course. Uh, all above board, all above board. Uh, I see you have the lovely gold. <laughs> I give a look to Madame Valerie that's just sort of, I'm sorry, look, I'm gonna get through this, it's fine. I'm sorry, sorry that he's, like, try and convey in a look. I know he's being an ass, but I'm just going to try and get through this. I don't know how orc physiology works, but however it does work, Madame Valerie's face is bright red with fury at the moment. Um, but I guess it would just that, be a darker green. A darker green, yes. <laughs> so yes, you're darker green <clears throat> with fury. You're handing the gold over, or what's what's happening now? Can I have the hash stone for a moment? Of course. Hand you the hash stone. Okay. Uh, I want to inspect the hammer with the hash stone and do a perception check as I do so. Oh, of course, of course, yes. Of course, we can't always trust the women folk to be able to operate technical machinery so correctly. <laughs> he laughs at his own joke in a way that just makes me want to punch him in the face. I unhelpfully get a five. 
on perception. Uh, you can tell that he is a slimy self-ed censorship oh. person. C- Skeleton I... warrior. You notice that his aftershave is really, really bad. Okay. I feel like the chances of the DM... Ha- like, I'm slightly gaming the system here, but I think the chances of the DM sending us to a fake uh, fake version of the hammer twice are unlikely. Just as a, just <laughs> as a last... Gaming. Just as a last... <laughs> A last step. I'm going to I'm going to make an insight check to see if I can judge whether or not this man might be tell like man mm-hmm. might be telling the truth. You mean if this slimy worm might be telling the yes, truth? Yes, slimy I mean. goblin fuckhead. Yes. Okay. You know he is a slimy goblin fuckhead, but mm. he appears to be telling the truth. Very well. Give him the money. Right. Okay. We've got a deal. I sort of hand over the gold and go to take the hammer. You hand the, the gold over to him, pick up the, the hammer, and he holds his hand out to you to, to shake on the deal. Right. I I shake on the deal. Make a strength Ooh. check to crush his it's, hand. It's warm oh. and clammy. Can can I do a strength check to see how 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 much I can sort of try and outgrip him? Ooh. Yes. Give him <laughs> give him a squeezy hand. Fourteen. <laughs> uh, you, you 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 squish his hand and glare in his eyes as you do so. You're doing that thing where you're rolling his knuckles between your fingers, and he's trying not to cry, but you can see a little trickle of sweat. Can we? Can we high five? <laughs> oh, we're not done with him. We're not done with him yet. Well, you pick up the hammer. Of course. Uh, well, oh, flesh is doing business with you. What's, um... well, I suppose while you're here, you wouldn't be interested in uh, selling this lively one, would you? We could always do with a few more girls around At here. At that point... <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's fine. At that point, I kneel down next to him. I put my... I, I reluctantly put my arm around his shoulders. I, I, I didn't quite recall your name. I'm, I'm Revo. <laughs> Revo, Revo. Yeah. Funny, funny you say that because, and at that moment, uh, I'm going to make a strength check to no, claw no, grip his no. nuts. Can, can I, can I just suggest that we maybe rewind this because I think there's a way we can actually find out something really useful to a potential quest if we don't do this. Trust. I me. think if we play the slimy shit bag. No, 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 no. Okay. I know what I'm doing. I've got this. So at that I moment, hope you know what you're oh, doing because I, I thought at, I had a good plan here. At that moment, I claw grip his nuts. Not like claw them, but like like get them like quite uncomfortably <laughs> gripped in my hand with my other arm around his shoulder, and I look at him and I say, "Absolute pleasure doing business with you, but if you call me darling again or offer to purchase me for your shitty establishment, I won't limit myself to squeezing these things." This, this is not what I was Moreover, hoping we would do here. <laughs> no, no, no. Moreover, that girl that you're wiping off for the next one, I'd like to see her for about five minutes, if that won't trouble you all that much. And I let go. Just, just as a heads up... Can I make way... an intimidation check? Uh, okay. Yeah, you can make an intimidation check with advantage. Uh, yes. <laughs> Fourteen. Okay. He coughs and wheezes and looks you straight in the eyes. And says, if you want to spend time with any of my girls, it'll cost you ten gold, same as everyone else. So, I'm just gonna, like, give you a heads up as to how I was gonna... Actually, I'm gonna try and play what I was gonna play regardless. I'm glad this didn't backfire on us spectacularly. I wasn't gonna, like, fucking kill him or anything. I just wanted to, like, try and intimidate him a bit. So, this, this... Somewhat loses some of its position of um, of believability, possibly now. But my my tactic was going to be to ask. Maybe I'm interested if you've got someone who fits a very specific uh, description. What kind of girl are you looking for, sir? We've got all sort sorts of here. Swallow, Cobbles, like drown. swallow down again, just like. Uh. Uh, Cobalt, drow, goblin, orc, what, what, what uh, are your what pleasures, species uh, is the person we're looking, looking for? for? Is, is that the, the, the one with the red eyes? No, uh, we're, we're, well, oh. I was going to yes. ask about both. Pat, Patu, who you're yes. looking for. Because you've not red got eyes. The, Yeah, Patu, and is Patu, did you say a drow? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, any chance you've got a red-eyed drow? Possibly, uh, 
cross-shaped scar. I know it's a bit of a specific request. You know, e- either that or a, a, a drow, you know, dark skin, possibly, um, like, slave branded. O- only on oh, the left, well, though. The Very... slave thing, are we, sir? I'm <sighs> sure we can sort something I- Again, out. have to swallow back the sort of just seething desire to kick this man's ass, but... <laughs> uh, just, 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 just on the left, though. Specific, just specific desires. Sounds like you're looking for someone particular. Well, I've heard rumours that you've got some people that might fit my uh, specific tastes. Roll persuasion. Nine. I get the impression there's more to it than that. What exactly are you doing here? Well, we're here for work. We're buying this buying this hammer from you, and... I squeeze his nuts again, and you don't need to know anything else about why we're here, except that we're looking for a particular individual, and you'd be very, very helpful to tell us. He in- yelps. Intimidation. And in doing so, calls attention to some of the other staff. Shit. And coming into the room are the two goblin bouncers. There are two... Gerblins. Two Gerblins. Two Gerblins. Let's have that sweet, sweet initiative roll. Okay. Mm. This is fine, because I get to have a cool moment now as a result of this, I think. And uh, this will be another stressful situation for you. Uh, 16 on initiative and wisdom 12. Okay, again, you have passed that. We need to roll for the boy. Uh, initiative for the boy 20. 20. Okay, so the boy's going first, followed by Brumara, then Madame Valerie, Revo, and the guards. As you turn around to see the guards entering, Revo runs over to a corner of the room and disappears through a trapdoor. I can't wait to catch up with Revo and tell him that he's a fucking cunt. Well, we're going to do more than that, probably. Oh no, I'm going to, like, murder him, but... <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. Oh my goodness. Really unquestioning moral justification to fucking kill a guy. (laughs) I love it when that happens. I love it when a murder comes together. This is my design. First in the order was Thrall. Uh, Does somebody want to roll for Thrall? I'm going to assume we'll be rolling uh, an attack. Boff, boff, boff. Okay. Uh, Who's he after? Uh, Let's say the goblin on the left. So that's four. So Thrall runs over to the goblin, grabs onto the front of his shirt, pulls himself up and smacks this goblin in the face. Nice. He spits out a couple of teeth and the uh, boy returns to the lineup and does his idle animation. Waiting for the next, attack. <laughs> uh, next up we have Bromara and Puff. Can I use Thaumaturgy as a, a quick action before I do my primary action? Ah, uh, casting time one action. It's fine. All no. I want... To, I, it's not worth, like, screwing up the combat order, but I wanted to use it to just shout, like, some some obscenities very loud at uh, Revo. But I suppose I can just do that as Revo's running out. I'm just going to shout, I'm a woman, you cunt, and you're going to fucking get it in a minute. On the, the, the one that Thrall attacked, mm-hmm. I'm going to cast Witch Bolt. Okay. Which forms a nice sort of sustained arc of light of blue lightning between me and the target. Uh, range spell attack against that creature. Five. Uh, nope, but that is a miss. It hits the door frame of the office and leaves a, a, a scorch mark up the side of it. Okay. Well, considering that that's been unsuccessful, with uh, Puff's turn, Puff goes in to bite the uh, the same guard that Thrall attacked. For five, five damage. He bites into the goblin's neck. The head comes off. Uh, blood gushes into the air. He drops to his knees and then falls forward. Uh, you might want to stand back a bit. He is now gushing blood on your feet. Nice. Mm. Madam Valerie. Okay, I look at the other goblin, uh, crack my whip to the side, I, and I, I look dead into his eyes and I go, I've got a suggestion. Off you fuck. And, and I you... make an intimidation check. And I get a uh, 12. He looks somewhat perturbed, but not enough to run away. And are you going to attack? Well, I want him. 
I am going to crack forward my whip and travelling down the whip, bolts of lightning. No, nay. Licks of flame will travel down my whip as it begins to make contact with the goblin, and I cast Burning Hands. Can I just say, I love that roll 20 for Burning Hands has a range of 15 food cone. Oh dear. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that's a 15 foot cone, but I prefer 15 food cone. Mm. I cast a fiery cone of death in the direction of the other goblin, and... Oh, that goblin will have to make a dexterity saving throw. Mm. Oh, no. (laughs) I don't think he did it. (laughs) I don't think he did it either. 11 points of damage. You crack the whip onto the goblin. The flames rush along your whip up his leg from which you have wrapped it around. And he is incinerated. And falls to the, the ground as a charred, blackened skeleton. Nice. Your guards are dead, you fuck. Do you want to come out now, Revo? From another room, you hear the sound of a high-pitched scream. We run towards the scream. Mm. Okay, you run out into the, the lobby area, which is still under the tent. As you come out, all weapons drawn ready for battle... The bugbear stands straight up. The girl that was sitting on his knee just falls on the floor. And she doesn't seem like aware enough to pick herself up at all, really. She just sort of lies there for far longer than you would think anyone would if they had just fallen face first on the on the floor. And the bugbear squares up to you. Will attack, I suppose, the one that's most intimidating. That'll be you, Valerie, as the tallest. It Excellent. attacks you with a morning star. Ooh. Oh my goodness gracious me. I'm guessing that beats your AC. Mm, yes, my armor class is 12. Okay, don't forget you've still got that point of inspiration, by the way. Oh, okay, yes. 12. Ow! I am on six hit points. <laughs> and bleeding <laughs> from places. I can bleed. That brings us to Thrall. Thrall will make an unarmed strike. Oh, get a nine. He swipes and the bugbear looks down at him and just laughs uh, off to Bromara and Puff. I'm going to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Nice. Uh, so you have to do a wisdom save or fall prone. Uh, wisdom of one, that's not going to cut it. Um, that is a crit fail. Yeah. Um... It finds everything hilariously funny and as a result it is now... Prone, incapacitated, and can't stand up until it successfully beats a wisdom saving throw at the end of one of its turns. So at the moment it's just laughing, yeah? It's just laughing and it can't attack. (laughs) Is that how bugbears laugh? (laughs) Yes. Uh, We'll see if he keeps laughing after this. Uh, My uh, Puff the pseudo dragon is going to bite him. Uh, 16. Does 16 hit the AC? Equal to the AC. So I do 1d4 plus 2. 3 damage. (laughs) It tickles. Uh, It's uh, Valerie's turn. I thrust my whip forwards. uh, (laughs) Latching it around the neck of the bugbear. And channeled through the whip, uh, once again, licks of flame speed down, and a cone of fire engulfs the bugbear. I cast Burning Hands. It's too busy laughing. Nine points of damage. <laughs> oh, God, it burns. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> okay, and it is the bugbear's turn. Uh, and then we need a wisdom save, yeah? Uh, wisdom is nine. You hit the spell save DC. <sighs> you'll pay for that. <laughs> uh, hopefully you'll be the one paying for it. Thrall, darling. Uh, I will do thrall. <laughs> As he's prone, uh, thrall's going to get advantage on an unarmed strike. And okay. that's a 17. Well, heck. What's the damage? Four damage. He is looking pretty rough. Uh, You hear scuffling and a a high-pitched voice, clearly uncomfortable with whatever is going on. 
Hmm. And somewhere in the distance, a door thumps open. So, yes, Bramara and Puff. Wisdom saving throw, please. A wisdom save. 14 wisdom. Okay. Another successful whiz. <laughs> whiz well. Successfully whizzed. I want to leave Puff fighting. Okay. And attempt to investigate those sounds that we just heard. Okay, you move to the door. You open the door. And just down a corridor, you see Revo holding a blade at the throat of a young drow, drow girl who looks absolutely petrified and you notice that she has red eyes and a scar on her left cheek cross-shaped scar right hmm uh can i use the magic eight ball to find out the result of an action before i decide whether to commit to it can i suggest you think very carefully about your next action before you uh, attempt anything rash if you really do want anything to do with this thing I'm going to use the magic eight ball to find out whether I would be successful at a persuasion check. 21 crit. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to attempt persuasion, I guess. Just as a reminder, how many uses do we get of the magic eight ball? Dos. Two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, is that two total or two left? Two total. Two total. Okay. That's fine. I think we made a good use of that oh, one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Listen here, you slimy fuck. If you do not give her over, you are going to have a lot of hell to pay. You know how quickly we've just murdered your guards? You really have nowhere to run. I suggest that you let her go and you back away slowly. He looks absolutely defeated and he throws the girl towards you and makes a break through the door that he's just come through and slams it shut behind him. Do I... have I used up all of my movement this turn? You could walk to the girl and that would be the end of your turn. Okay, for now I'm going to walk to the girl. She clings to you looking scared and she starts crying. I'll hold on to her tight and just stay here until next turn. It's Puff. Puff is going to attempt to bite the bugbear. Six. No. No, no hit. Is the bugbear still prone? Still no. Yes, the bugbear is prone. Yeah. As you remember, it was 16. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, 15 because it's prone, but that's still not enough. Okay. I do not successfully bite the bugbear. Madame Valois? I crack my whip and then thrust it towards the bugbear and make a, a nice cracking impact. 20. Not natural, okay, is unfortunately. A hit. Excellent. In which case, I do. Three points of slashing damage. Okay. Oh, sorry, no. I do I do four points of slashing damage. I have a plus two, not a plus one. As the bugbear starts to push itself up off the floor, the tent flap flaps back, and there in the doorway, flanked by two ogres, is someone you haven't seen in a long time. <gasps> Standing in the doorway is Scrum, your former employer, and owner of the Eager Wench's brothel. Da, da, da. Holy is, shit. Is, is that particular soap opera known for like, oh, it's the brothel owner? Do, 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 well, do, do, do. Um, I don't know. You know what? I think just about everything has happened in that fucking show. Yeah. That's a very good point. <laughs> I'm not your wench. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you very much for joining us. Laura, where can we find you the rest of the week? You can find me Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 at kotaku.co.uk. Uh, this week, I previewed Mario Odyssey. I wrote a thing about still collecting Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild. Uh, other than that, you can find me on a bunch of other shows that I do. Uh, Pixel Squirt, which is my video game porn review show, came back this week. You can go find that Yay. on the Geek Remix YouTube channel. You can hear me on Podquisition, which is somewhat of a video game themed show-ish, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, that's probably a good list of things. Go find me on those. And Astrid. For all things communism and video game related, you can go to jaffermeister.com. That's J-A-F-F-A-M-E-I-S-T-E-R. Dot com. I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jaffermeister, where I mostly try to convince some friends of mine in the games industry that their favourite video game characters are actually communists. You can find me on Twitter, at Jaffermeister, where I talk about 
all kinds of gay shit. That's the best shit. You can also find me on Indie Haven, of which I am the editor-in-chief. We've got a video up today, which is, uh, well, today as of recording. It's very, very good from uh, one of my contributors, Josh Rivers, talking about the video game Pyre. So you should go check that out. It's really cool. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, that's, that's where you find me. Thank you very much. And I can be found as at Maniac Janiac on Twitter and on YouTube as, I believe it's Silly Pook Monster. But if you cite Maniac Janiac, you will find me. Hmm. Apart from that, I am doing nothing. I write this. This is literally all I have now. <laughs> this is the best thing. I'm loving it. <laughs> we are loving taking this journey with you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's going interestingly. And, and I hope that people are enjoying it. Thanks to everyone who is liking and sharing. Yeah. It is, it's good. Did we ever find out if we made it onto to iTunes? I can find out if we ever got approved for iTunes. Give me like two seconds. Uh, Stone Mo- oh, Stoned Monkey Radio. Yes. Stoned Monkey Radio by Maniac Geniac on iTunes. Yeah, you can you can find the podcast on iTunes by searching Woo! Stoned Monkey Radio. Yay! Well, you can also check out Jane's other really, really fantastic horror podcast show, The Programme. They're both on one feed. You can listen to them both. They are, and I'm hoping that I will have the finale of that up by Halloween. Excellent. Sort of the deadline I'm setting myself. Very well timed. Um, it's, it's going to be an extra long one, because mm. uh, I think breaking up into two episodes doesn't really make much sense. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm probably going to super super cut yeah. the whole thing as like an hour and a half of just weird ASMR horror themed weirdness. If you struggle at all to find uh, the podcast on iTunes, you can also do so by searching for Maniac Janiac on iTunes. I'm Maniac Janiac everywhere. Yeah. Just like you used to be Laura Kate Buzz everywhere. <laughs> uh, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Hmm. Pretty sorry, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> um, also, I believe Astrid set up the Instagram account this week. Yes, if you go to Instagram, Insta, Instagram, uh, no, Instagram dot com forward slash Polly Cuties. There's only one thing up at the moment, but I'm going to be putting up a bunch of cute drawings that I do of the podcast things on there. So you should go Yay. take a look at that. It's really great. And. Yes. Funnily enough, speaking of social media related things to do with the RPG, if you go to twitter.com forward slash Valerie Polly SMR, you'll find that Valerie has finally joined Twitter. Yay! It means Screecher. It's amazing. Screecher, sorry. Yes. Got to keep it in the universe. I will have to start following you. (laughs) And the the podcast as a whole. Mainly Vendirac can be found as at Polly SMR uh, or at Polly Armory SMR. That's A R M O U R Y. Thank you very much for joining us. Join us again sometime. Bye. 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 Fighting death in human horse. Thorson tried to kill them all. They escaped the vile moor. Now Polly Armory store. Polly Armory. <laughs> That's fucking amazing.